Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number seven on using SketchUp CAD 3D software. If you remember in lesson six, we started talking about design rules and the real important concept that we introduced in lesson six was that when we design something in a program like SketchUp, we've got to design it with our fabrication in mind. We've got to design it thinking about what the manufacturing capability of our fabrication infrastructure is because you can design things that you cannot build and just because you can draw something doesn't mean that the fabrication infrastructure is going to be able to build it and so in lesson six we designed and built this little guy okay and what we found is is that with our raised 3d printer uh, we determined by printing this uh, the design rules for that particular printer for two important parameters and the first parameter was if we have two holes how closely can we move those two holes together where they remain two holes and at what point do we lose that little bridge of material and it just becomes one hole and what we saw is is that for our printer with our configuration that we could put two holes within 0.2 millimeters together if they were 0.2 millimeters apart you would have two two holes still if you got them closer than 0.2 millimeters you lost the separation and it became one hole then the next question was how closely can we put two columns together before we lose the hole so it's kind of like the two opposite problems two columns how close can they be brought together before you lose the gap between them before the fabrication bridges and similarly we, we found for that uh, the design rule was 0.2 millimeters now in this particular case those two design rules how small of a hole can you make and how small of a gap between columns both of those design rules were 0.2 millimeters but oftentimes depending on the technology those can be different okay now the next design rule that I want to understand for my printer is going to be like if I have things that are inserted into other things so imagine you had a little case with a slip cover on it or imagine you had a hinge that you wanted to rotate on a pin the question is what what tolerance would you make things between the dimension of the pin versus the dimension of a hole and there's two different ways that you would want things to fit together one thing might be that you wanted to press two things together and for them to become stuck so that they are permanently together that would be a press fit that you would have two pieces you would press them together and they would remain permanently together and so that would be a very very tight fit but 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 not so tight that you couldn't get them together so something that you would get them together one time they would be permanently together the other type of fit that you would want as opposed to a press fit would be a slip fit something that you would put together and it would be uh, nice and snug but the part would be free to rotate so that would be something like a hinge so you wouldn't want a lot of slop and play in the hinge but you would want something that would uh, uh, not be binding as you were as you were Move, moving it and so that would be a that would be a slip fit now what you can obviously see is is that you wouldn't want to make a peg let's say 20 millimeters and make the whole 20 millimeters because there would be very little chance that you would get exactly the type of fit that you wanted because there's uncertainty in the size of the hole and there's uncertainty in the size of the peg so what we want to do today is we want to design something like this okay and what we are going to design and I'm going to erase this and then we're going to step through it together and because again this is just really great experience of getting familiar and getting comfortable with designing 3D objects in SketchUp and uh, paying, being mindful of dimensioning things and positioning things as we create them and so this is a good design exercise plus it's a really handy device it's a really useful device that will allow us to determine our tolerances and so this is going to be a peg and the peg is going to be 15 millimeters in diameter then I've got a little nice base we're going to put it on and then here is a block and we're going to have holes of different sizes and so this is a 15 millimeter uh, 15 millimeter uh, in diameter which means the radius uh, would be uh, 7.5 right it would be 7.5 in, uh, in radius and so here we're going to start with holes that have a radius not starting at 7.5 but starting at 7.75 
okay and then the radius radius is going all the way down to 7.2 millimeters and so what that should mean is is that moving in kind of point uh, 05 changing the radius 0 0.05 millimeters at a time it 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 at this end we should start where the fit is really loose and sloppy we're trying to get to the point that it would be more sloppy than we would want and then down at this end we'll get all the way down to where it would be so tight that it wouldn't fit in and somewhere between these two as we change the radius by 0.05 millimeters at a time we should have a device that will be a nice snug but freely spinning fit and then we should also find a point that we could press this peg in a hole and it would be sort of permanently in there and so those are the two design rules that I want to kind of determine now is is what the tolerances would be for getting a uh, getting a good slip fit versus getting a good press fit okay so let's just start here and I hope you guys will go along uh, with me here we will come to new okay don't save and then I like to start new so that you can uh, get uh, design along with me we're going to delete this guy okay let's get our model set up so we're going to come into model info and this time I do not want to design in millimeters zero millimeters just means to the precision of one millimeter and I don't want to do 0.1 millimeters I want to go to 0.01 millimeter precision okay 0.01 millimeter precision so you decide you select 0, 0.00 then I don't want length snapping because I want to be able to get in there exactly on my guide marks and so that should set up remember we're working in millimeters okay so let's start designing this thing I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here okay so let's try that so let's get the rectangle tool we're gonna to come down pop to the origin we're gonna click once and then I want my rectangle to be 125 millimeters by 45 millimeters 125 by 45 millimeters I believe will be good okay now let's uh, come in and kind of get our view a little bit better here let me get the hand move it over I kind of want to be looking down on this all right now I want to start putting in some guidelines okay that'll help me design this and if you take a few seconds take a few minutes and put your guidelines in everything else is going to be easier so where I would like a guideline who's your friend the tape measure is your friend I would like to come up if I want nominally a radius of 7.5 millimeters that would be a diameter of 15 and then I or, uh, well no it would be seven uh, seven point five radius and then I would also want five millimeters to the end and so I want my guideline twelve point five okay so let me explain that again that, that from the edge of the circle to the edge of the block I want five millimeters and then I add to that seven point five millimeter radius and that's twelve point five so all my centers should be along here and similarly I would want centers 12.5 from the top okay so this line is 12.5 from this edge this line is 12.5 from this edge okay now from the first one over I would like that 12.5 as well so right I, I let's come here pop to that point okay come out 12.5 all right so that's saying that'll leave me 7.5 for a radius and then five more out to here now I understand I'm changing the radius is a little bit but I'm setting up my guidelines just like everything was going to have a radius of 7.5 because it'll be close enough to that that these will work okay now how far between them well I would have two radiuses which would be 15 plus I would have a space of five so it would be 20 and so I will go to this point and I will come out and put a point at 20 okay I will do that again put it at 20 I'll do it again put it at 20 do it again put it at 20 and so that is one two three four five one more come out to 20 
okay and if I did this right I should be roughly 12.5 from here yeah so it's 12.5 so look at that that's gonna work great so let's do the same thing up here come over snap come over type in 12.5 enter snap come over snap 12.5 enter uh, oh I'm sorry that should have been 20 so right these are 20 so let me get rid of that one undo guide snap click 20 okay snap click come over click type in 20 enter okay snap to it click come over click type in 20 enter here come over 20 enter okay click here come over 20 enter okay now you see what I just did I just gave myself little points that I can snap to to draw my circles all right I gave myself little points to snap to so I could draw my circles this is going to go pretty fast now so let's get the circle tool come over here and get close to that point till it snaps to it it says online not good enough guide point okay make sure you get to where it says guide point now I click I come out and then what did I want my first one 7.75 radius okay 7.75 radius and now I'm gonna go down in radiuses by 0.05 each time okay and so this one snap this one's gonna be 7.7 .7, okay this one is going to be 7.65 okay this one is going to be 7.6 okay what's this one 7.55 this one make sure you snap there 7.5 okay so this one is going to be the one that has the nominal radius of uh, at 7.5 it's going to have the nominal radius of 15 and then this one is going to have like it's going to be like a half a millimeter uh, bigger in in diameter so we're going to kind of get a half millimeter and then we're going to go uh, the other way here so this one was 7.5 radius so this one will be click here 7.45 enter click here 7.4 enter this one's going to be 7.35 enter snap click click 7.3 enter 7.25 enter let me make sure I don't I'm not sure I got that right let me try that again 7.25 enter and then click here 7.2 enter okay so this 7.2 would be down to kind of like 14.4 diameter and so you can see that we're like a a good bit uh, in in diameter like a tenth smaller to a tenth bigger and then we'll find what uh, what fits well all right we're also gonna want the other let's just go ahead and design this and I'll come back and do the peg later so I want to I want to just extrude this all at once and so I'm gonna get my selection tool I'm going to click inside this circle and delete it because I don't want to extrude I want a through hole all the way through so I'm only going to extrude the outside part so I'm going to click delete click delete click get rid of the insides here okay now we're going to use the pull up tool so we're going to get this and we're going to pull it up an arbitrary amount and then how far did I say I actually wanted it 50 so I pull it up an arbitrary amount I click and then I type in 50 and then that's going to make this whole thing 50 millimeters all right look at that that is pretty slick if I wanted to make it a little fancier I would come in and put text by each hole saying what the uh, what the uh, radius is you can do that if you want but I'm not going to take the time to do that okay so let's scoot this over now we're gonna make the base the the kind of pin 
So we're going to get the rectangle tool again. We're going to come uh, draw a rectangle here, uh, make it kind of an arbitrary size. And then what I think I am going to do there is uh, what would be a good size on that? Uh, I think I'm going to make it, let's say, well, I'll make it the same width as this. So let's see what we did here. Get this. I should have written this down before I... Okay, 45. Mm, let's see. I'm going to make it 25. Okay. I'm going to make it 25 by 25, and that should be pretty good. I'm sorry, I should have jotted that down before I got started, but we're going to get a rectangle. Okay, and we'll just look at it, see what 25 comma 25 looks like. Okay, that's going to be pretty good. And then I will extrude that. So I will get the extrude tool and I will extrude, extrude that up, let's say 25. Okay, and now what I want to do on top of that is I want to put a circle. Now, I don't want to try to eyeball it. I want the circle right in the middle. And if you look, I can kind of get it to snap like here to the midpoint, but then it's hard to get it. You see, it says it's not giving me a snap point to this other edge. And so I can kind of get one midpoint or the other. And so I could come in with the guideline. The easiest thing I find to get to a center is I'm going to go, who's your friend? The tape measure, go corner to corner, snap to that corner, snap to snap to that corner and now this point should be the center okay just going corner to corner so now let me get the circle and what did I want the radius of this to be this was just the there's going to be only one it's the same size it's going to be 15 millimeters in diameter and so what it's going to need uh, let's see it's going to be 15 millimeters in diameter so I need to have a radius of 7.5 enter Okay, now what do I want that in height? I want that to come up to a bit, be about 50 because I want it to go all the way through the uh, all the way through the the uh, the other one. And let's see, I, I might ought to go, I might ought to go, ought to go a little bit more. Maybe I should go 55 because I think I had the other height set at 50. So we're going to go 55 on this. Okay, so we'll get this, go up an arbitrary amount, click, and then type in 55. Okay, now let's uh, back off and scoot this over and look at this. All right, that that's okay because this is, eh, that's okay. That'll that'll work out all right. It's just from here to here, from here to here is more than from here to here because I want it to go all the way through to test these things out. Okay, this is pretty slick here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to remember to send something to the 3D printer. You need that, uh, you need that extension, uh, that extension that does the STL, export STL. I think I showed you how to do that in the first or second, uh, the first or second uh, lesson. You need to go to the uh, extension warehouse and you need to get the STL export. Then you can come over here and you can uh, export STL. You'll have this menu if you get it from the warehouse, the export STL, and then I will export it. Uh, and since I am so uh, not organized, I put everything on the desktop, and I will call this uh, I will call this pins and holes. Okay, I will save that. All right, so now I have an STL file. All I got to do is load that into my slicer and then send it to the 3D printer. So what I will do is I will send this to the 3D printer and then I will come back and I will talk to you guys in just a minute. Okay guys, I am back and I have fabricated this thing. And so let's kind of spin it around and take a look at it here. All right. So this is what I have. I'll try to show it to you kind of like you got it there. All right. So you see, this is what I have. I have this pin and then I have all these holes. All right. And I've got to kind of be careful and normal, normalize myself here. And let's see if I'll 
kind of make myself bigger here. All right, I got to kind of figure out where I am. So I got to find out which corner had the really big hole in it. Okay, so let me uh, let me see if I can come over here and give you a little bit better view of this. Sorry about this. So we will let you look with the little over, overhead camera here, hopefully. Oh yeah, there it is. And then I will get small and get out of your way. All right. So let's look at this. And let's look at the sizes. Okay. This first hole is 7.75. Okay. So 7.75 times 2 would be 15.5. So this first hole has point five millimeters extra in diameter all right and so if this pin is 15 and this is 15.5 you can see that that drops right in okay that's kind of good but then also you see that that really for a slip that that has too much play for me I'd like to see if I could get it a little bit tighter it's got a little bit too much play okay and so this is the 7.7 .7, little tighter 7.65, 7.6, 7 7.55 is getting a lot snugger. You see it still is spinning, it's still spinning real easy, but there's a lot less, uh, there's a lot less uh, slop in it. So let's go to this one. Okay, this one is now the 7.5, so this would be kind of like 15, 7.5 uh, radius, the exact same size. And now you see it's kind of binding when you try to put it in, okay? And this one slides in smoothly, it doesn't bind, it moves freely, but it's snug. And so that hole was the, uh, that hole was the 7.5. 5, 5 radius okay 7.55 radius would be 15.1 millimeters diameter okay and what was the peg the peg was 15 millimeters so what is my tolerance that is how much room should I leave when I want to slide something into something else? What I should leave is an extra 0.1 millimeters. Okay? So if I wanted to have something that was 10 millimeters for a peg, I should make the hole 10.1 millimeters. I should make the hole or the slot or the gap 0.1 millimeters bigger then I make the object that's going to be inserted. And then if I do that, I believe this was the one, it will fit in smoothly, it will turn without binding, and there's not a lot of slop. Okay, now what if we wanted to press fit? Okay, well this is still kind of loose. This one is getting tighter, okay? But I think I could still go a little bit more, yeah. Like if I was going to really hammer it in, I don't want to go any tighter than that or it's not going to go in but if I I'm not going to do it but if I got this and hammered it in you would not be able to get it out you would have to break it so that would be for a press fit so my tolerance for a slip fit is 0.1 millimeters for a press fit okay what am I at here that is 7.4 so 7.4 times 2 is 14.8 okay and so for a nominal 15 millimeter peg that is a minus 2 millimeter tolerance minus 0.2 millimeter tolerance for a press fit that means the hole should be 0.2 millimeters smaller than the peg in order for you to get something that would be uh, completely a uh, completely a press fit Okay, so let me let me uh, say that that when I say minus 0.2 millimeters, you might say, well, then it's not going to fit at all. Well, you got to remember that this thing doesn't make things exactly the size that you told it, and so maybe it makes, you know, 
pegs a little bit smaller than you told it okay so what that means is is that if you write these things down and just do this it should work if you want something to go in go all the way in and be snug and turn nicely you need to leave extra space of 0.1 millimeters if you want it so tight that you've got to kind of hammer it in and it's going to be permanently in there you should make the whole 0.2 millimeters smaller than the peg or the slot 0.2 millimeters smaller than the than you know whatever you were gonna you were gonna slide into it okay so design rules what have we learned so far we're seeing some interesting things that on lines and space is the smallest space you can have between two lines is 0.2 millimeters the smallest space that you can have between uh, the smallest gap that you can have between two holes the smallest line that you can have is 0.2 millimeters the smallest hole that you can have is 0.2 millimeters all right and then what we learned today is we learned that for a slip fit you need to leave a tolerance of about 0.1 millimeter if you want to get a press fit you need to uh, have a minus 0.2 millimeters for a press fit I I hope this makes sense of what I'm saying and I hope you understand what's it, why it's important there's a lot more design rules that we can determine but if we'll just have these simple ones it'll make it so much easier to design when you have two physical objects you can get them within 0.2 millimeters. If you try to put them closer than 0.2 millimeters, they'll bridge and become one. If you have two holes, you can put the two holes down to 0.2 millimeters together before they become one hole. And so that's the kind of design rules. And if you'll keep these in mind, as we start designing things, it will make things a whole lot easier. Now understand that this is not universal design rules. This is for kind of like my 3D printer with my slicer set up and the way I'm doing things. If I was going to move to a different 3D printer or a different uh, uh, slicer configuration, I would redo these things. And so I'm going to save these files because I could use them again if I needed to, uh, if I needed to uh, determine the design rules again and also remember we made this first simple structure just to kind of see measure and see how accurately we were getting the dimensions that we thought we were getting okay I hope this makes sense and I hope if, if there's one thing that you're getting out of these lessons is you cannot design in a vacuum you cannot just draw something and then think it's going to be someone else's problem to manufacture it that anything that you design you have to design to design rules either figure the design rules out yourself or work with the, your manufacturing infrastructure to agree on a set of design rules but the most important thing in using SketchUp or any CAD software is to design to well-established design rules okay I hope you guys have found this useful I'm uh, really enjoying it because I'm kind of learning how to use the SketchUp software along with you uh, if you like this think about giving us a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel think about sharing this these video lessons with uh, with other people that you might think would be interested okay Paul McWhorter toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later